Early the next morning, Sarah, Felix, and John went back to John's house. Sarah chose wearily around the path. She could barely keep her eyes open. When they arrived back at the house, John told Sarah she would have the spare room, and Sarah collapsed on the bed and fell asleep. In the middle of the afternoon, Sarah woke up from a horrid dream because she felt so much shaking her. She looked up to see Felix standing over her. What is it? she asked, rubbing her eyes. Maria told me to wake you up because she wants to take you to the market to get some new garments. Well, you must have been really tired because you slept a long time. Yeah, well, I didn't get any sleep last night. Sarah's heart skipped a beat. She realized she had told Felix that Quintus was like, Felix, I have to tell you something. Quintus, he's alive. What? You must have been dreaming. We both saw him get stabbed twice, in fact. Yeah, I, I did dream, but I, but I also saw him in real life. Yesterday when I was going to the temple to see Jesus, I'm not kidding. He went to a witch to be healed. He said that he killed all the soldiers and that stood up to him. And that he wished he would have killed us. He didn't come in because John and Peter told him to let me go. Oh dear. Oh dear? The connotation Sarah took from his words was different than Phil's had to him. I meant, oh no, that he's back, he clarified. Well, he's pretty much a coward. I'm glad he didn't hurt you. We just have to make sure to stay away from him. You never did tell me what happened yesterday when you talked to Jesus, by the way. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't bring my father back. He doesn't have the power? Phil asked. He just wouldn't do it. I came all this way for no reason at all. Well, John told me that Jesus and his disciples are having dinner here tonight. Maybe we could talk to him then. I want to get my family back also. And the only way for that to happen is if he turns time back. Did you talk to him last night? Sarah asked. I did talk to him for a short time. Don't you think he's like a powerful sorcerer? I don't know about that, Phyllis. How could his eyes be filled with so much love if he's just a sorcerer? I mean, when I saw him yesterday, I instantly felt warm inside. Well then, how else do you explain his magic? Lazarus told me about the time he raised him back to life. Mary told me she believes. She thinks he's the Messiah, Sarah told him. Come on, you don't really believe that, do you? Felix laughed. I don't know, Phyllis. I'm sorry to explain why I felt so overwhelmed when I saw him. Sarah, are you ready for me to take you to the market? Miriam called. Yeah, I'm ready, Sarah answered. Sarah and Miriam walked to the crowded marketplace. I always wanted a girl. Miriam said, but my husband was quite happy with one child. I just wanted someone. Love me taking them to the market and buying them new garments. Well, I do love going to the market, but my mother can hardly ever afford anything, she told me. So, did you bring anything else besides this garments you're wearing? Mary must. No, this is all I have. Well, as long as you are under my roof, you'll have more to wear, she said, smiling at Sarah. Find a few new garments that you like here and bring them to me. Oh, thank you. Sarah looked at all the different options to choose from. There were so many bright and colorful clothes. Finally, Sarah picked three multicolored robes and Mary and paid for them. Sarah asked if she could stay at the market longer. The delicious smells that filled her nostrils, the busy sounds and the vibrant activity made Sarah happy. Mary was only too happy to say yes because she wanted to stay longer also. The two of them spent a long time at the market, and Sarah told her about her whole journey. When Mary finally looked up at the setting sun, she remembered she had a fixed dinner for the guests tonight. We have to hurry! They rushed back to Marion's house, and she hastily made dinner. When she was done, Jesus and his disciples arrived at the house. Sarah thought... It would only be right to offer to help Miriam serve, and because Miriam had been so kind to her. So Sarah and Miriam brought out the food and then sat down to eat with everyone else. During the meal, Sarah avoided Jesus' eyes. This time, looking into his eyes made her feel guilty for being so direct and demanding. 
and then for becoming angry when he didn't grant her request. When Jesus and his disciples were about to leave, Phyllis asked Jesus if he could speak with him. The disciples just waited outside. What is it you wish to me to do for you, Jesus asked, knowing full well what Phyllis said wanted to speak with him. Well, you see, Sarah asked you if you could do something for her yesterday. I was just wondering, why can't you do this? I mean, are you like a powerful sorcerer or something like that? If you really knew who it was you were speaking to, you would not speak to me in this way. Sarah could come to me if she has a problem. She has to decide if she's willing to believe in me. How about you? Best was surprised by Jesus' directness. Excuse me? But no offense. But who are you? I mean, really. I'm the light that was sent from heaven and born into the world because my father said, It is time. It is time for my children to be delivered out of bondage. Felix took a few steps back. You're not saying that... You're not saying that you're the son of God, are you? I follow God, isn't that enough? Jesus looked at Felix in the eyes and rebuked his words. Out of your mouth your heart speaks. I know what is truly in your heart, and I know that what is in your heart is not of God. If you truly desire to follow God, you would let go of the anger and the bitterness you've been holding on to for so long. Give your bitter feelings to me, and I will drink your cup of suffering. Come follow me and believe, Phillips. Phyllis was so stunned he didn't know what to say. All this time, I believed I was following God, but now I know I wasn't. I guess I never understood what it meant. How can I understand when I don't even know who I am? I don't want to be like the other Romans. I want to be a different, a better person. I want to believe, but I need more faith. If you are truly seeking God, you will have the faith you desire. Jesus told her, I will try. I'll go get Sarah and tell her. She can speak with you now. Felix found Sarah and brought her to Jesus. I have this question. It's, it's been nagging at me for a long time, so so sick. Am I not worth anything? I felt this way for a long time. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall from the ground, apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't doubt your value. For I tell you, you are valued so much that even the Son of Man is willing to give up his life for you. I also don't understand why you can't bring my father back, she added. I hope my father speak the world into motion, Sarah. Within a snap of my finger, I can bring back time. But I seek to honor my father and do what is best for his children. We are only given one life to live and one story to play a part in. I am telling you the truth. You were able to change the world with a story that God has left you play a part in. If I turned time around, you would not have this remarkable story. It could bring a difference in the lives of countless others. Sarah had never even considered what he had said before. She had not realized that she had such a big impact on others. Is that my destiny? she asked. That, my child, is one of the reasons you were on this earth. You must look into your life to find your calling. Jesus placed his hand on her shoulder. My father made you special, and he has a work for you to do. The only way you can accomplish this is if you believe. He knit you together in your mother's womb, and he calls you by name. Sarah's so her face brightened because she started to build about it. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. Ray told me she believes that you are the Messiah. From your words, it's hard for me to say I don't believe. I do believe in you, Jesus. I do. As Sarah turned to leave, she just left her with a few last words. Remember that you were not a mistake. With his, with his words, Sarah felt like she was being showered with an immense amount of love. Right now, it was like she was being held close. Jesus and his disciples left the house, and Sarah took a for a conversation with Jesus. I'm loving your unique story, folks. I have a purpose for my life. I've never looked at my life that way before. I was born to change the world. Jesus made me feel like I was important. 
Why is this important as Queen Esther? She told me I must look into my life to find my specific calling. I'm not sure what it is, but I know that in time, the destiny will be revealed to me. I guess we both realize something like that. You know, Sarah, I was thinking we were both being selfish. I wanted my past and you wanted to have a different past. The truth is, I'm actually glad we're in this moment. You are? Why? Sarah was surprised to hear this came out of his mouth. Because we both got what we wanted. We would never have come here. And I feel like there's another purpose for us being here. I just don't know what it is. There's something exciting waiting to happen. I can feel it. And also, if he granted our wish, I would never have met you, and I'm so thankful that I did. So I smiled up at him. Me too. I don't know what I'd do without a big brother to look after me. Caleb and John came out of the room to talk to Sarah and Felix. Hey, I'll be leaving here early in the morning. I'm going to spend the day with Peter and the others. You're pretty close to them, aren't you, Felix? I'm especially good friends with Peter. He's like a second father to me, anyway. Can we come with you, Sarah asked? Sure, if you want. Oh. Can I come too, Caleb asked? Of course you can, Felix ruffled his hair. What should you all do today? Sarah asked. Oh, uh, wouldn't you like to know, Felix teased. Didn't really do much, just sat around, Caleb answered. Thanks, Caleb. You're fun to fun. I was trying to make her feel like she missed out. Oh, sorry, Caleb said. It's okay. I was just messing with you and Sarah. So kind of you. Sarah said sarcastically. Okay, well, I'm gonna go to sleep now. John told them. Next morning, everyone woke up, ate breakfast, and then Philip, like Sarah, and Caleb followed John out the door. They found Jesus and his disciples sitting down and watching the wealthy drop their offerings in the temple treasury. Sarah thought it was very odd that they were just sitting there, but she noticed the, then she noticed a very beautiful young woman who was dressed in shabby clothes come and drop two copper coins in the offering. Everyone was very surprised that she would come away to give two coins that were worth only pennies. Jesus looked at everyone sitting amongst them and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put in more to the treasury than all the others. They gave out of the wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live. But she, she only gave a cup of coins, Caleb John Caprice. Jesus looked at Caleb and smiled. That was all she owned. This young woman has given from her heart. They spent the day listening to Jesus teaching. In the afternoon, they were all outside when they saw a few Greeks coming towards them, Sarah recognized them as candidates on her mother's list for Sarah's marriage. Hoping they would not recognize her, she turned her face away. Phyllis, I think we should go now. Go? Go where? Back to John Mark's house. But John and Caleb are here. Why do you want to leave? Sarah pointed to the Greek man. You know them? he asked. They're a rich man. All of them, the people my mother is considering for my marriage. I thought your mother would want you to marry inside your faith. Are you kidding me? She married a Greek man. All that matters to her is if they're rich or not. Can we just go, please? They're not even looking at you. They're talking to Philip. I want to see what happens, Sarah. Just don't look directly at them. After Andrew and Philip had and was to Jesus, he sat down on the stairs looking deeply troubled. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it. While the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. As Jesus saw the Greeks approaching him, he looked around at the multitudes. He straightened up and looked up to heaven. Now, now my heart is troubled, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, 
It was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Everyone looked up at the colored sky where they saw the light flash, and they heard the sky roar like a lion. Did you hear that? God spoke to him. He's really the son of God, Sarah said. No, it was just thunder. Philip said. Then Jesus spoke again. This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment in this world. Now is the, the prince of this world will be driven out. But when I am lifted from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. One angry man to come, charge it, Jesus, and try to strike him. We have heard from the Lord that Christ will remain forever. So how can you say that the Son of Man will be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus looked at the man who went to choke him. He took the man's hands away and then spoke. You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, before darkness overtakes you. The man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become sons of light. Jesus left the prayer alone and hid himself away.